out with the old and in with the slightly less old, all the way back in 2020, which in reality isn't really that long ago, but kind of feels like an eon ago, GTK4 finally dropped. And since then, GNOME has been in the process of migrating away from GTK3. And you may or may not have realized, but that migration has still been going. Even in GNOME 43, released back in September, apps were still being ported over. And while the work is, you know, most of the way done, it's not like most of the desktop is still using GTK3, there are still some little things here and there holding on, and the dependency still hangs in there. But very recently, two more major elements have been crossed off that list. Gnome Shell and Mutter. Basically, two of the fundamental parts of Gnome that make Gnome Gnome. And even as of a year ago, there wasn't that much work to be done. This issue was created called Move Away From GTK3. As far as I know, there are three blockers to moving to GTK4. Gnome's Bluetooth port to GTK4, Mutter's SSD implementation, and Gnome Shell's tray icon implementation. This first one was dealt with basically a year ago and has already been merged, so it's not exactly a uh, major concern. But as for these last two, and a couple of other little extra things, these were dealt with a couple of days ago. We have this first one here, move away from GTK3, port the X11 display away from GTK3, and remove GTK3 as a dependency from the Mutter library slash executable. We have this one over here, X11. Add public API to X11 events. This API will still be used by GNOME Shell to handle X11 events in the relevant places as a substitute to GDK window at filter. It is at the moment still a bit ironic since the Mutter X11 event handler is itself a GDK filter funk, but it may move away from that eventually. And also these ones as well over on the GNOME Shell. Move tray implementation away from GTK socket. That was addressing this one here, and this final one, screenshot. Use glib bookmark file to save recent screenshots. Avoid the GTK dependency and use the common glib API to store screenshots in recent files. While at it, give it a better exec hint than the implicit that GTK added for us. Nobody seems to pay attention to that, but if they ever did, it's better to provide sensible information. And with all of this being done, it finally allows for this right here. Move away from GTK3. Now, I know we've seen three things all called move away from GTK3, but this one actually moves away from GTK3. From the last and most involved commit, update to drop GTK3 dependency. There's a few things going on here that unfortunately must happen in lockstep. They're not really that crazy. It's move GNOME Desktop 3 to GNOME Desktop 4 and GNOME BG4 as well. The code in UI slash background.js required minor updates. The libnma dependency gets replaced with its full variant. The code in misc slash motor manager.js required minor updates. The GTK3 dependency is torn down everywhere but tests. So there's actually still going to be a GTK3 dependency for the developers because if the test suite works with GTK3, Sure, you could go and update it to GTK4 and maybe that'll make everything more consistent and, you know, bring things in line with the desktop as well. But the test suite moving up to GTK4 isn't exactly a important requirement. That can be done in the future. What's much more important now is getting things consistent and fixed for the user. The rest of it can be dealt with later. And finally, GTK init check is no longer called. As a result, we replace a hard GTK3 dependency with a soft GTK4 runtime linking one, only, only added indirectly through GNOME BG4 and libnma4. Considering that all of this work has now been merged, the important question is what happens now? 
currently GNOME is in its beta for GNOME 44. If you want to go and try it out, go ahead and do so. With the full release supposed to be happening on March 22nd. That's probably going to happen, but it might shift by a couple of days here and there, depending on what ends up going on throughout the beta. And this was made, this was merged in the middle of the beta. So does it go into GNOME 44 or does it wait until the next release? Maybe like a point release after GNOME 44 comes out, maybe GNOME 45. This is actually tagged as GNOME 44 right here. So it seems like it's probably going to make its way into that. So if it does come during the beta, probably a GNOME 44 RC2, RC3, somewhere down the line, ready to give it a little bit of testing to make sure everything is still good, and then ready to make its way out to the public, basically getting rid of one more reason why GTK3 still needs to be around. Now, in other unrelated to GNOME dropping GTK3 news, but partially related to GTK4, a lot of other fun stuff is happening in GNOME right now because GNOME 44, you know, literally just around the corner. GNOME's Mutter lands experimental code for HDR modes. Over in the Wayland sphere of Linux, there is a lot of work being done right now to have HDR actually working. I know some people out there are like, HDR is a buzzword, you don't need to care about HDR, and you probably don't. But if HDR is going to be a feature that we see existing in desktop computers, at some point, we probably want to make use of that on Linux as well. Yesterday saw Gnome Shell and Mutter drop the last of their GTK3 dependents, we just talked about that, while today there is another interesting change to mention on the Mutter compositor side, an experimental option for enabling some HDR modes with supported high dynamic range displays. Merged today was the MR by Sebastian Wick to add an experimental development tool for HDR modes. Right now, it amounts to an experimental on-off switch for PQ and REC 2020 formats with displays supporting them. The intention is that in the future, this experimental HDR option should also toggle TF, color space, and HDR metadata support, and HDR metadata support to around, I think that's an extra word that shouldn't be there, the high dynamic range desktop support. Along with this, there is a change regarding fractional scaling. GNOME 44 Mutter adds fractional scaling v1 Wayland support. I talked about this ages ago, that's why it's not getting another dedicated video, but GNOME is finally ready to merge this. So GNOME is going to properly support fractional scaling, at least sending that information to libraries that support it. Because the problem that GNOME has had until now is when it does its fractional scaling, you can give it a fractional number like 1.5%, 1.75%, and it goes to the next highest integer and scales down. This gives a bit of a blurry effect in many cases and isn't optimal. What you want to be doing is scaling to the point you want to scale at, and this would let you do that. The only issue is um, GTK4. So <laughs> even though GNOME is now going to support this, GTK4 doesn't, so basically the feature is going to be there doing nothing until GTK5. They could make GTK4 properly support fractional scaling. Uh, they've said in the past they don't want to, so it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. Also, speaking of GTK5, this is still probably at least like three, four, maybe five years away from anything actually being ready. If you remember from an earlier video, I did say they were planning to properly start development sometime towards the end of this year, so it's still quite a while away, but once that's ready, expect the cycle to begin again. But don't expect any major shift to happen outside of GNOME. So much of the software that I use is GTK3, and I don't see it ever shifting to GTK4. Honestly, I would be less surprised if a lot of the applications I use shift over to Qt instead. It seems like outside of GNOME and outside of applications made with GNOME in mind, 
most people just don't care about what's happening in GTK now. Even Gimp is just barely getting to GTK 3. I would have thought, you know, considering how long it's taken, you would skip up to GTK 4. No, no, it's not going to happen. GTK 3 will live on for another decade, probably. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you use GNOME? Do you care about GTK? Are you a KDE user? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out my Patreon, Scribe, Sally, Bearer, Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and you've been gnomed.